this video we're gonna be breaking down nickel double mug this is gonna be updated since the patch this defense is still really effective and I wanted to do a video kind of deep diving how I use this defense post patch so uh, nickel double mug and this is in I believe the Jets playbook now if you want to get my entire double mug defensive ebook that is going to be available in our school community, school.com slash Cody Ballard. That's where you get access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks for both Madden and for college football. But I wanted to get into this and just kind of talk about kind of some of the new formations that you're seeing a lot of, kind of the new route combos you're seeing a lot of, and just kind of do an overhaul of this defense for you. So uh, double mug. And pretty much what I do now is I pretty much unanimously base out of mid blitz. Um, the reason why is because – I don't think the zone alignment is super effective for the way that route combos are being put on the field. You can base out of a zone alignment, but I just, I've just found, I think man is a better base for this defense. Now, real quick from a personnel perspective, you want to make sure that you've got your fast safeties, your fast corners. You, you want to have those guys on the field. So my opinion these two guys on the outside are the least important players in the defense. And I'm going to normally put linebackers like middle linebackers or something like that in the middle. We're going to be putting like fast. And I mean, fat, like Micah Parsons, Jason Taylor, like fast defensive linemen, defensive ends there. And then I like to have safeties. I'm a big believer in safeties at these two positions as well, because we want speed. Speed is king. And let's go ahead and get into it. Mid blitz. Okay. So the blitz, what has changed about the blitz? Basically, the old way of setting up mid blitz was to pinch your defense, slant your D-line down, and then zone out the DNs. Now, you can still do this, and sometimes this will disengage, but it doesn't really disengage. Um, and the reason why is because when you pinch your D-line, it actually spreads or it, it, it kind of messes up the defense alignment. Okay? So what I would suggest is just not spreading your defensive line. So we're just going to slant our D-line inside. We're going to then zone out both of these linebackers. Normally what I like to do is user this linebacker on the trip side. I feel like that's the best amount of coverages that you can get into. And then when I'm running this, I'm normally going to be um, – I'm normally going to be – I think I messed up my D, but anyway, there you see, and there you see it. Um, normally I'm going to be pressing out of this. So press, slant your D-line inside. And then this is pretty much my basic setup. Now, the reason I like to play, be in press man as kind of a base right now is I just think it's really effective for the current way the game is being played. There's not a lot of good man-beating routes. I don't necessarily think you even need to shade underneath. Shaded underneath man is kind of the most aggressive form of it. But I like to basically just simply base out of this. And normally I'm going to move my user in. And one of the other underrated things you can do is you can man this guy up to the linebacker or the, the tight end. You could then play like kind of a cover two on this right side and then ha always want to have a hard flat over here on this back side. And then what you can do is you can actually take the safety and cross man him onto the outside bunch receiver. The reason that I like these adjustments is because what I oftentimes I'm going to do is I'm going to, if the tight end goes to the flat, I'm just going to be able to be free with my user and be able to use her over the middle of the field. If the tight end goes on like a post, then I'll typically switch stick onto this deep half. So let's just kind of run through a couple popular route combos. The first one would just be like, you know, your basic street corner flat. This is really simple because I don't have to, I don't have to use her flat, right? So what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to go up to the corner route. Now, the other thing that you can do in one of the more popular combos that I've seen is this. I think this combo is very popular, and the reason why it's very popular is because it's very good against switch stick. This coverage is going to stop this combo. So let me just show you what it is. It's normally this right here. So if you think about this, what's my user responsibility? What do I want to defend? What I want to defend is this tight end post, right? Now remember, this is a linebacker, and I'm just going to, when I see this combo, this soft squat's going to do a really good job at taking away the corner route. So what I like to do here is if I see that tight end go on a vertical route, I'm almost always going to run with him for a second and then I'm going to switch to the half. So you'll see like here, I see vertical route, I'll switch to the half and we'll just kind of go help with that. That's one of my favorite ways uh, to kind of defend a lot of things that people like to do. Because if you think about it, most people are going to have either the tight end's going to be on a flat, a drag, or a post in most bunch offenses. Most bunch offenses 
that's pretty much what you're going to see. Now, you could also, um, I do think it's it's all also justifiable with the way that I'm playing defense to have an inside quarter here. Uh, this inside quarter is something that, you know, I think is really good too. And again, as far as how am I holding my, how, how am I kind of presetting my user up to do this well, what I'm almost always going to be doing here is I'm going to hold square. Um, I'm going to click square, which is the audible button. If you're on Xbox, I think it's the X button. And then my my cursor is, is being held up and to the right. So the snap of the ball, I'm just going to be able to go back up and to the right like that. Now, the reason I like that quarter as opposed to a deep half is a couple reasons. Number one, it's really it's a lot better against a route combo like this. Like, let's say they do a route combo like this. I don't have to go use for this tight end in route. And the reason why I don't have to go use with the tight end in route is because we have this defensive end on a flat. We're cross manning here, and then we're doing something like this. So again, I see that the tight end goes on a drag. I don't really need to take that. That flat will guard that. I'm just going to go to that post, right? But that quarter is going to do a much better job because the reason – the main purpose of the quarter is to take away the seam streak, okay? So if you're getting a, a defense like this, let's say we put this guy on a half – and then, you know, we're kind of we're kind of doing our, our adjustments and we kind of ultimately end up in this defense. Now, for sake of illustration, I'm going to spy these guys, but I want you to see what happens with this streak. You'll see that if they do like a stemmed curl or they streak him or whatever against that cover two, that deep half will fan out significantly to the left side. He actually played it much better than he normally does in game in game. He'll fan out a lot more. And when they do that. Um, when they when they do that, they can basically just throw the seam straight. So that's why I like the quarter over the half, uh, just kind of standard way. You know, if they're doing this combo right here, right, and we're setting our defense up and we have that soft squad and we have this cross man on a circle, you know, we're manned up here. Whoops. And we have this flat. This is like my base bunch strong D. But the thing I want you to see here, is this curl can kill you if you have. We gotta wait on this a little. See, I fanned out a lot more there to the left side. And then it's one of those things where sometimes he'll catch up, but I feel like I've just given up enough touchdowns on that to know, you know, you want a quarter, in my opinion. So another one of my favorite ways uh, to play defense is one of the best, uh, so with the blitz. So the main thing they're gonna do to kind of counter the blitz is they're gonna do this pass for right here, right? This will take away the four man, but so then what I want to do is I want to send five. So the way that I send five is we're just going to send five off this left side. So we're going to press, we're going to slant our D line inside, and then we're going to use her this defender. Now, this is where I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive. And so what I like to do is I'm going to put this safety on the left hand side on a hook curl. I'm going to shade underneath. And then I'm going to man my user up to the tight end, and I'm going to deep half on the right side. Uh, you could deep quarter. I like the, the deep half, okay? And the reason for this hook curl on this right side is he will take away, like, instantaneous snap throw slant routes, post routes, things of that nature that are normally pretty good. I'll normally shade that solo guy outside because I have that hook curl as my help. And then with my user, what I'm really looking to do here is I'm really ultimately looking to switch onto the safety almost instantly and basically be the deep half defender myself. So what I'm anticipating is they're going to get screamed at, right? If they do put the running back on a route, it's normally going to be some type of flat route or something like this. But in general, you know, my user off rip, I'm looking to switch right here, right? If they want to throw the running back, that's fine to me. But what will happen a lot of times is they're going to they're gonna do this like half slide, block the running back deal. This blitz is going to do a lot better at just attacking, uh, just attacking what they want to do. If you want to try to stand over the tight end, um, sometimes that will kind of help with the man coverage. But, I mean, you see, once they start to block running back and go to that protection, it might pick it up for a second, but the pressure is going to get in, right? So... This is where I'm, you know, I'm going to start to get a little bit more aggressive with my defense. Another one of my favorite adjustments is to deep half this guy on the right 
and then I'm going to creep, if you will, on this yellow. So, and you can even man him up to the running back, but basically at the snap of the ball, he's back here. I might even manually move these guys down, but I'm going to get this guy here. And again, the whole idea behind this is we want to pressure quick. So I'm just going to get this pressure, and then you see how this shade down man is going to work. Normally, you don't see a lot of people put this solo guy on a streak. So when they do, it's almost always a combo like this, right? Let's put this post here. So if we go back to our base, base defense, shade underneath, I want you to watch the solo wide receiver. You'll see sometimes he gets that instant win. Now, I do have Kraus over there, so he's not like the best man-to-man -man corner. If you have a better corner over there, it'll be a little bit better for you. The thing I want to show you is this idea of essentially using this half, but then switch sticking onto it if there's not a streak. So, again, we're going to man this guy up here. In this situation, almost always I'm going to have a quarter or a half over here. I'm going to leave this guy. But basically what we're looking to do here is – if we don't see a streak, which I'm trying to think of the main combos you're going to see, a lot of times you're going to see stuff like, you know, in route, corner, something like this, right? If they're doing something like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch stick onto the half and then onto the other half. So at the snap of the ball, I'm going to kind of use this guy and then switch stick and then switch stick. And then now I'm able to rob that, that uh, I'm able to rob that in route all the while still being able to send a lot of pressure, right? All the while still being able to send a lot of pressure. Okay. So another defense that I really like out of this, I really like the soft squat and quarter combination. And then if you want to, I almost, you, you can cross man the tight end like this and then have this hard flat here. And then now your user's a little bit more free. You don't have to really worry about what the tight end is on. The big issue with this is if they run a combo like this, you'll see that cross man kind of gets, he just kind of gets beat. So what I like to do is I have the soft squat, I have this quarter. And then on this left side, what we typically will do is just put this guy in a yellow zone. And the reason why I like this is just because I'm the whole idea here is I'm going to switch stick onto it if the tight end goes on to something. So, you know, you're basically looking like this, and I'm going to use her here, snap of the ball, and let's say, let's say for example, it's this vertical play. Okay, so what's my responsibility? My responsibility is going to be um, to leverage this hook curl or this quarter. So it, it's really more so the running back. But anyway, so we'll snap go, okay, and we'll just switch stick here and take this away. And that yellow is normally going to be able to rob a lot of stuff. But I want you to just look at how we're using switch stick to take away the popular route combos. The south squat is so good this year because it matches. He's going to match and take that wheel. The uh, pressure is pretty much instantaneous. They did get that streak off. Um, if you want to stop the streak, one little thing I, I did want to say, like a solo wide receiver like this, put this guy on the left side in a quarter and put this D in, in a seam flat. And then now what you're able to do is you can kind of um, you can kind of stop things like this. And one of the other things that I like to do in this situation is uh, still I really like this seam street uh, this this soft squat with the quarter, you know, and basically a defense like this. But now you'll see she'll play a little bit more safer on this left side. You can kind of mix that in as well. And you can always mix in like the quarter and the third. So, like, let's say you want to play a little bit more bim, but, like, this is a great, like, disguise. We'll go quarter, uh, or I'm sorry, we're going to go uh, flat, quarter, quarter, half, um, soft squat, and then I'm just going to have my guy on a yellow. And the reason I like this coverage is because you're still only sending four, and then if you think about what you're able to do, you can actually switch stick onto this quarter. If you want to turn this quarter into a middle third, be my guest. But let's go back to that verticals idea. So, you know, let's say they're running this. Our soft squat's going to do really good for us. So what I'm going to really look to do here 
is I'm gonna kind of use her into this right side seam, and then I can just switch stick onto this middle third and kind of rob the post. And then I have the half and the vert hook to take away the running back. So that's another thing that I like to do um, to kind of use to kind of use against the the main bunch stuff that you're gonna see. So I've talked a lot about bunch. I want to spend some time talking about trips um, and how I like to defend trips right now. So trips is something that you know is pretty effective against double mug. A lot of people like to go to trips against this. So in general, same basic blitz concept applies. And in general, same basic coverage concept applies in the sense that I would really prefer to use her over here. Um, and the reason why is just because of the numbers that I have to deal with over here uh, based off the alignment of the formation. So again, if I want to send five, you know, I can send five like this. And a lot of times you're going to get pressure. And then let's say that I want to send four. And we have the ability to kind of, you know, play a little bit more basic. And you see that this is normally pretty good. So how do I like to defend trips in a way that doesn't get killed really with this route? Uh, the, the main route they're going to kill you with is something like this. This is the main route you're going to have to be able to defend. So what I like to do against trips is I really like to send four. I don't like to, I don't typically like to send more than that. But basically what I like to do is I really like to deep half on this trip side. It's going to help prevent a lot of the one play touchdowns. And then normally what I'm going to end up doing is I can actually man my user up onto the tight end, which I think is super good. And then we're going to take this linebacker on the right side and put him into a curl flat zone. So the main thing that you need to worry about is ultimately this running back route, which I'm not going to like super stress about. What I'm going to do, though, is we're going to use that, use that shade down man with the two deep halves, right? And then we need to make sure we curl flat after we shade down. So it looks like this. And basically what I'm going to do is let's say we get a route combination like what I'm showing you right here. What I'm going to normally do is I'm going to basically kind of switch stick over in here and try to basically take it away, okay? So it's not as hard of a switch stick as you might think. But the reason that this is really good trips defense is because there's not a lot of stuff in trips that beats man, especially on this trip side. The main ways you're going to beat man from this formation is through using the tight end. So we're going to play zone on the tight end side with a cross man of the tight end. And then we're going to have kind of our, our base coverage. And again, I really like this. And I would really advise, if you can, move these guys down. But basically, my job is to get on top here. I see a oh, corner out. I can switch stick right to it and take it away. And then if they want to throw that flat for five yards, they can throw the flat. I don't really care. Okay? So let's talk about some of the, some of the ways, you know, that they might try to go about beating man. One of them is this play verticals. If you can't stop verticals, you can't stop trips. So again, I'm going to come out. Slant my D line down. I'm going to cross man on the tight end, shade underneath. And then we're going to go to work on our coverage, which is typically two deep halves and a, um, a curl flat. Okay. So if I get to play verticals, um, the main thing I'm worried about is the running back. So what I want to do here is essentially just use with the running back. The pressure is so good against trips that they're going to have to block somebody. But I just want you to kind of peek at what's happening here on this left side. This shade down man is really, really good, and it's hard to get beat over the top with, okay? If you wanted to, um, another defense that I really like against trips is the seam flat quarter quarter trick. So what you're gonna do is this is a match defense. So what we're gonna do is we are going to outside quarter, this outside trips guy, we're going to seam flat, this inside trips guy, we're going to inside quarter um, this guy right here. And then basically what this allows us to do is have this tight end cross man. And I'm going to almost instantaneously switch stick onto this vertical hook. Um, and the reason why is because I think this is just the best way to play trips. And then on the right side, we're still going to stick in that cover too. So we're going to have the tight end cross man. This is a send four. And then we're instantaneously wanting to switch stick onto this vert hook and basically use her him. You could put him on anything, but I just think the vert hook's the easiest to get to. So if you look at this, how this plays verticals, for example, again, you're just going to instantly switch stick here. And you see pretty much everything's going to be guarded really well. 
So those are kind of my main adjustments against trips. Um, occasionally what we'll get into is if I want to every now and then I might creep on this guy. And the reason I would want to do something like this is if I wanted to get a little bit more into kind of that, you know, a coverage that looks something like, like this, for example, we'll just use a curl flat or vert hook. Um, let me get this guy on a vert hook. So you see something like this. And then what we're able to do here is, again, kind of this. This is really just my favorite way to defend trips. You know, stuff like this is really good. If I feel like the, you know, I want to make sure that there's no big play happening, this would be a defense that I would I would jump into. This is going to be – it's just going to be really, really good against taking away the big play, right? The two quarters um, – and then the deep half, I think, are really good. And then, again, the cross main of the tight end is really good for, like, the tight end post. The main thing you have to worry about with this defense is the corner route to the tight end. So another thing that I like to do uh, to take that away is to take this defensive end, and we're going to man him up onto the tight end. And then we're going to have a curl flat here. We're going to outside third here. And then, really, the rest of it's – Honestly, if you, if you want to leave the backside manned up, you can leave the backside manned up. The purpose of the middle third is to help kind of bracket the tight end vertically. And then with your user, you could even just man up the tight end. And essentially, your idea here is to switch stick to this middle third off rip. But let's just show what this can do against the corner route, which is the main concern. You'll see that that man's not terrible, but where it does get beat, it gets beat to the outside. And then that curl flat's there. And then you kind of have everything, you just kind of have everything taken away that way. Um, another thing that we need to make sure that we're able to defend is something like a PA counter go type of play. So if they are uh, wanting to just run like a tight end streak on this right side, this coverage would be something that I think is pretty decent against that. Uh, you'll see here that that I'm not shading anyway, and he doesn't really get burned over the top in a man coverage look. So you have that going for you as well. And then, I mean, really, that's pretty much how I like to defend trips. It's not not too crazy complicated. If you ever want to send five, normally what I would suggest, if I'm going to send five against trips, I'm normally going to want a user over here. So I'll just kind of creep on this guy. And then typically I'll just man him up to the running back. And then this allows me on the right side now, you know, I can kind of play shade down man uh, on this right side. Now, if I was doing this, you have to kind of be cognitive or aware of this you know, you might want to do it like this. And the reason why I would want to do it like this is just because I can instantly, I can instantly switch stick onto this quarter, or I could just do it like this. You know, this is pretty good. And you can send five. I don't normally like to send six out of against trips, but if I was going to send six, you're going to kind of ultimately need to have like a cross man on this tight end, a purple zone here. And then what I would probably do if I wanted to ever send six is I would probably um, basically start here and I would switch stick to the curl flat. So if I ever want to send six, start here, switch stick here, and then I can bite down on that running back route. That's pretty much my trips defense out of this. Um, you know, again, a lot of a lot of this half, quarter, quarter, this is kind of your passive trips D. The reason I really like this cross man of the tight end, we didn't even get too far into this, is because let's say that they run an old school trips combo, which is basically like slant post. If they do that, you are going to be in really good shape against that. And I want to show you why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, run to the tight end and then I'm going to switch stick onto this deep half because the thing about this guys is if they're not running clear out streaks on both sides, you can take these deep halves and deep thirds and use them to bite down on stuff. So again, we're kind of run over here, you know, and look at that, look at that cross man play pretty decent, right? So that's the idea is if they're trying to beat you with like, if they're trying to beat you with things like slant posts, because you are in a man to man look a lot of times what's going to happen is this cross man is going to do exceptional on this tight end. And this is for almost anything. I mean, if we're in a defense, you know, if we're in a defense like this, 
like, like so. Again, I'm just going to run. Okay. Watch this cross, man. Just latches right onto him. So that's one of my favorite ways to defend trips. Uh, it just plays really, really well against the tight end, uh, the slant post, and things, things like that. One of the things I did want to go over uh, in terms of this little defense is how I defend sheet motion with mid blitz. So this is something that's becoming increasingly popular in the community. You're starting to see a lot of cheat motion plays. And the reason why they're doing these cheat motion plays is because if you're in a defense and let's say you set up a coverage like this, for example, this is going to do a really good job because you're going to see that this guy will follow him across the field. It'll kind of mess up the coverage on both sides. And then you, you can get busted coverages that way. So what I want you to do if you ever see if they if they're consistently starting to do that, if you just touch this guy, you can just manually slide him either which way. That's normally perfectly fine. Um, you can do that where you just kind of like put him right there. If you're going to be playing a lot of man coverage, you're going to need him to follow that. And so I'll show you kind of two methods. Number one, if I just touch him like that, if I want to play zone, if I if I if I want him to if I want to play zone, I'll just touch him like that, and then they won't be able to they won't be able to mess up, right? The other thing that I like to do, though, is if I want to play shade down man. So if I want to play shade down man, now I have to worry about this because, let me just show this. If it's, if it's shaded down, watch this man coverage. See how he dumbs out and glitches and all that? And then I get burned over the top. So what I like to do is when they motion, I'm going to take this defender and I'm going to man him up on the motion, guys. So just to il illustrate, let's say our coverage looks like this. And we have this. We're using over here. and We have kind of that deep half defender. What I'll normally do is, you know, let's say we have like our hard flat. And we have our guy manned up here. You know, if they run this. There's no purpose in having this guy manned up to him. So, and even if, like, let's say he's in a soft squat, what I'll normally do is they see how they go across. I'll just cross man him onto anybody. Um, but you'll see here that the, even though I shaded underneath, that cross man from the safety is not going to get burned. So that's one thing you can do is just use the safety and cross man, like, on the fly. So, again, let me try to show that on the fly. You know, let's say we had – I mean, this is my base bunch defense for a reason, right? This is still going to be fine. Um, and, again, if we're putting this guy on consistently in a soft squat, we can just basically uh, touch him like that, and then he'll he'll always stay over there. So this is pretty, pretty, pretty decent against this. As you see here, he just kind of takes that away. So, you know, this is kind of, to a degree, cheap motion proof. The main thing um, is – is basically just kind of clicking onto the guy that could get cheat motion glitched. Another thing that you can do, let's say you want to play this and you're shading underneath and this is, you know, this is kind of what we're doing. One un super underrated thing you can do is let's say, okay, I see the cheat motion. I'm just going to, Click onto this guy and then instantly switch stick off of him. That's another thing you can do. But in general, these are some of the, the strategies that I use to kind of counter the cheat motion stuff. The biggest thing is uh, one other little thing that you can do off, on the fly. Because, like, you're not going to obviously know. Like, they might have tendencies and stuff, but you're not going to be like, oh, they're for sure going to do it. Just shade over top. Just shade over top. Just say, okay, oh, you caught me, but I want to shade over top. And normally he'll get back better than he did right there. Another underrated thing, and again, I talked about it in the beginning, but I do think this is another just super simple play. Just cross man that safety. He's on a half anyway. Just cross man him onto that, onto that wheel. So, you know, again, situationally, right, they're coming out. You know, I have my defense set up however I want it. You're sitting here waiting for them to snap the ball, and all of a sudden they cheat motion you. Well, think about it. This guy is probably in a quarter or a half. 
uh, with the way that we've been suggesting that you defend a formation like this. So if that's the case, he motions across. Okay, we just cross main him on the circle. And now we just have that bracketed, and that's going to be taken away. So those are some simple solutions um, to it. The biggest thing, guys, is you can't play cover two on the cheat motion side. Uh, that's the reason why cheat motion is becoming more popular. Um, you could, if you wanted to, I'm trying to think of any other super good solutions. Because if you want to play shade down man, you know, you want to play shade down man, right? So you want to be able, you don't want to have to, you don't, you don't want to be moving that slot corner. The biggest thing is to make sure that you have a plan for that wheel. That's the biggest thing you've got to make sure. So, again, when they do that cheap motion, I think something very simple, just like cross manning this guy onto that is really effective. Um, and then when you do that cross man, you could, you could then man this guy up on anybody else. Um, or you could just let him be manned up. One underrated thing that I do think can work as well is just purpling this safety. And let me show you why. So you see here, and you could kind of switch stick to that purple. You could just purple him. That's another option. Um, because, again, you're trying to basically adjust on the fly to something they're doing. But I really think, like, this purple, this is another reason why if you did want to set zone drops, putting this curl flat at, like, 30 or 25 is pretty helpful uh, for a situation like that. The main problem that you're going to see here, guys, consistently um, is really just that this, this really is not going to do a good job. One thing um, that you can also try to do against cheap motion is just get on this guy right here and go user it yourself. I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. Um, but you don't, you, know, you, don't, you don't want to have to be doing that. But in general, that's something you could do. Again, I really believe in this defense right here is perfectly cheap motion proof. If you move this guy back in the soft squat, this is going to do fine against that. You still get that nice press on the slot. You still get that nice press on the solo receiver. The only person you're not really getting a good jam on is going to be this outside guy. But if you look at this here, you know, if they run this, take a look at this cross man, he's just going to take this away, right? They're going to try to throw it. You got it cross man. It, it's taken away. So I'm going to leave that there, but that's mid blitz little double mug update for you. Wanted to go over some different coverages, different things I'm doing now. Uh, defensively against the most popular stuff in the game. If you guys want to learn the entire defensive ebook, it is available in our school community, school.com slash Cody Ballard. The link is going to be in the description below.